Yo, yo, what's good people? It's your boy the Kryptonian saying, bringing you a review for One Piece chapter 293. And everything comes to a head in this one. Now, personally, I wanted the flashbacks to end in the last chapter. I feel like that was the perfect ending. And yet, Oda stretched out a little further. Personally, I disagree with his usage of the flashback in this one. I don't think that we need to see uh, Wiper talking to uh, his grandfather and saying... Do you really think that if I can ring the bell, that that'll make them uh, get back? Do you think it can actually reach uh, Kalgara's friend? I, I felt like a little too much at that point. I feel like the perfect ending was what happened before, okay? But because this is an ongoing weekly series, I can understand why you might want to just continue it. You know, hell, the flashbacks might have been popular at the time, so I can understand. Kishimoto did a similar thing when he was explaining uh, Obito's... Uh, Obito's unmasking. It pissed off a lot of people, and yet there was a large section of the fandom who actually liked it, so I can understand it. I felt like the Obito flashbacks went on too long, too, when that was a weekly occurrence. So, knowing that Oda is continuing this, and now we have reason for why, uh, why Wiper wants to get the bell back, it makes a lot of sense, okay? It makes a whole lot of sense. And so we find out that Kangar did die. But again, I really feel like this is one of those moments, excuse me, this is one of those moments where you got to have faith in your reader to make that connection that he was going to die. Just look at all of the different moving parts that were taking place in that chapter, okay? I feel like Oda didn't have to explicitly tell us. But then again, you do have some people, if it's not laid out for them, they're going to take it and run with it. Like what happened in Dragon Ball Super where... Future Goten is black, and it's just like, it makes no fucking sense. Like, they had to literally show black killing Goten and Chi-Chi in order for people to realize that black could not be Goten. So, I can understand why you might have to dumb it down, and maybe this is me being a little too intelligent for my own good, but just look at what happened, okay? They got taken from being on the sea, okay? And let's just say Jaya already has a decent elevation, right? Doesn't matter how decent it is. They got taken several thousand feet into the sea, none to see into the air. And so it's, the air is thinner the higher up you go. And so they're struggling to catch their breath. They're in a new surrounding. They're having to adapt. That's where evolution kind of kicks in and just the human uh, survival mechanism that we all have, like that need to survive. All that's working, but you're fighting people who are used to the atmosphere up there. It's implied that they're going to die. There's no reason why they would have been able to keep fighting. And if they didn't die in that battle, they would have died eventually, okay? And we didn't even need it just spelled out that he was going to die. You just need to see that statue of Kagar that was there when Anel just decided to blow up uh, the hidden the hidden village where the Shandians are from. That's all we needed. That's all we needed was to see that statue. So that's my one critique of this chapter. You know, I feel like sometimes... It gets lost a little bit that I am actually reviewing, and it's not just a love fest, so I point out the good, and there's a lot of good in One Piece. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of good, but there's also some stuff that can be done better, and that's what a review is for. So, miniature soapbox moment done. This chapter, I did like how we see just the savagery of Anel, and it makes you feel more for what's going on with this land and these people and the history of Shandor, like with their people. It makes you feel more for it and it raises the stakes more. And that's what that did. It raised the stakes. You know, I can understand why some people might feel like uh, those flashbacks are a bit of an odd placement, but that's why you put them in there at this point because it adds further to the story while also expanding the world building of this island we're on. And then when it comes back to Anel, it raises the stakes because we see Anel has no value for the history of the land that he's in. And now he's starting to destroy everything. So that is the beautiful thing. That's why you have that in there. So I like how Anel's just going section by section like, bam, you get destroyed. Bam, you get destroyed. Bam, you get destroyed. I like how we see all of this, right? And there's even this one shot where one of the guys that's uh, being taken out is like, man, if we didn't listen to that girl, Conus, if we didn't listen to her, oh shit, we would have got fried too. And so it's like Anel is just turning everything into a bug zapper and you just see it in every person's face. Like they know that this is it. Angel Island, everything, Skypea, uh, the Shandorian residence, everything's going to be destroyed. And Anel even goes as far as to say, 
I just care about this bell. All you people from the Blue Sea anyway, take your asses back down there. And it's, it's almost, he's almost reminding me of Magneto in a way. Because Magneto, Magneto really, really has this whole thing of uh, mutants are like the original people and, or the only strong people. And so just to see how Magneto has this crusade and how he has his disagreements and he believes he's right, you can almost argue that a nail is like that. So very, very interesting to kind of see that that's the direction that this is going. Now, another thing that is taking place right now is the fact that we do have this one one scene where Luffy, after Wiper's like, I can't let him take the bell, we, we've got to go. Luffy's running and he's got that huge ball. And Nami's like, I don't get how he can run so fast. And Nami's trying to keep up and Anel even hears it. He says, there's two voices coming up. And so he knows it's happening. He knows Luffy's coming back. And it'd be pretty badass if Luffy just, when he showed up, he had that bell not the bell, that ball, and just swung that shit when he's running, and the momentum just carries it, and he just knocks it down, just one shot. So that'd be pretty cool. But obviously, oh, it's not going to go this way. We got another fight with these two coming forward, so this is going to be very, very interesting. And again, I feel like Luffy's going to take so much damage, Nami's going to have to take his ass back down. So that's going to be cool, because why else would Nami be going? She's got to have some type of purpose in that fight, and I think that might be it for what takes place after the fact. But one thing that we see is Wiper might be rejoining because Nico Robin tells him that that bell was probably in trying with the root with the root that sent them into the sky and that the bell is actually higher up and so Ganfall and Wiper are probably going to go to get that so in a way there is going to be a happy ending my chapter question for you guys is going to be what were you more impressed with with this chapter was it Anel Savagery was it the people acknowledging that Conus was right? Or was it Luffy running with that big ass belt? What did you guys think? But as always, guys, if you like anything I had to say, hit that like button as it really helps out the channel. Make sure to comment, rate, subscribe, and share. Thank you for watching, guys. Have an awesome day.